okay guys you know that during steel construction many times we need to use some connection to connect two different part of a single column okay so in this video i will discuss about how to design the column splices or what are the forces you need to consider when you are going to uh, design any column splice okay so if you are new to this channel please do subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited okay so let's start just consider this particular portal frame and this is the steel column this is part one and this is the part two of this steel column and here you can see that this red colored box is nothing but the splice which is being used to connect these two different part of this column okay so you can say that all the forces which are being carried by this part of this column are going to transfer to this part of this column through this splice right so to design this splice of course you have to take into consideration all the forces okay now the question is what are the forces which is being carried by this splice okay so definitely you will have some axial force or the compressive force second of course you will have some bending moment and finally due to the lateral load of course you will have some shear force okay so all the three forces are going to be transferred through this splice from this upper part of the column to this lower part of the column now discuss one by one how all these forces are going to be transferred through these splices and what are the factors you need to remember during the design for each of these forces so let's start with the axial force or the compressive force simply let's say you have some axial force like this okay so definitely this compressive force is going to be transferred from this part one to part two through these flanges some part through these flanges and some part through this wave right so let's first consider the forces which are going to be transferred through these flanges okay so first this compressive force go to this flange then it encounters this bolt right now this bolt carry this compressive force to this plate okay to this flange cover plate and in doing so this particular bolt is under the action of shearing effect okay and just like that in this side the compressive force comes like this going to the plate through this bolt and from this plate to this bolt again and to this bolt to the flanges of the bottom part of the column got it so here to transfer all the axial or compressive load you need to design all these bolts which are under the action of shear force okay so you have to of course you have to design this bolt for shear force coming due to this axial force or the compressive force right now let's say you are using some end plate splice or here you can see that there are some void in between the two part of the column but here this part one has been kept over a plate and this plate has been kept over some another plate which is connected to part two so now here directly all the compressive force is going to be transferred to part two from part one through the action of bearing okay so here you need to check all this plate for bearing action right now the second type of force that is bending moment okay you know that if you have any i section which is under the action of bending moment what will happen this bending moment simply converted into some push and some pull so here if you have some bending moment acting like this let's say in this column of course this flange is under the action of compressive force and this flange is under the action of tensile force so here also this is under the action of compressive force and this is under the action of tensile force okay i have already discussed how the compressive force is going to be transferred from this flange to this flange okay simply it goes down come to this bolt the bolt take it 
transferred to the flange cover plate then from there it transferred again to this bolt and this bolt transfer to the flange of this bottom part of the column got it the same is also applicable for the tensile force also okay but here the wave of this column is free from any forces because you know that in case of any i section the bending moment is mainly carried by the flanges okay the wave part almost carry negligible part that is why we neglect it right so we have successfully transferred the bending moment also through the flanges of the column okay and here is also you have to design all this bolt for shear action due to this tensile and compressive force now you may ask how to calculate this tensile force simply if you have bending moment m and let's say the distance between these flanges is d or indirectly the distance or the depth of the i section in that case the tensile is simply m by d as simple as that second type of force is also carried through this splice and finally how to transfer the shear force okay you know that in case of any i section the shear force is mainly carried by yes you are correct through the wave so if you have any lateral force or the shear force it is going to be transferred through the wave only okay so now this wave take all the shear force and transfer to this bolt okay this bolt transfer this shear force to this fish plate then again this fish plate transfer it to this bolt and finally from this bolt the lower part of the column take the shear force okay so here you have to design this bolt for this lateral or shear force okay that's it if you love this video don't forget to share it